In this video, I want to talk about a super important blockchain project that's going to be an absolute game changer for cryptocurrencies and DeFi as this space continues to blow up. We've seen this project gain a ton of traction over the past few months, and I only expect that to continue as this technology gains greater and greater adoption. So I'm explaining exactly why this video has a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis to talk about what this project is, why you need to know about it, and how it works. So before we get into that, you know, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to become a blockchain master step-by-step from start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. And last but not least, you know, I hate these disclaimers. It's not financial advice. I'm not telling you to buy or sell any cryptocurrency based on this information. There's lots of scammers down below in the comment section impersonating me. Just ignore them. I'll never give you my phone number or ask you to invest with me. So what is this project I want to talk about today? Well, it's ThorChain, the decentralized liquidity protocol. So if you've been plugged into this space for a while, you know, you might have heard about ThorChain already, but I want to make this video for everybody who hasn't talked about it because I do think it's a really important project in this space for the long term. I'll explain exactly why. So ThorChain also does have a cryptocurrency associated with it. That's Rune. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, what that token is and how it works uh, in the context of the Rune ecosystem. And full disclosure, I do not hold any Rune tokens, so I'm not like just trying to make this video to pump cryptocurrency prices. You know, it looks like they've, they've definitely done a good job of that uh, without my help here in the past several months. And I also have no idea where the price is headed from here, but I do expect this technology to become more in demand down the road, which could affect the price as we're going to see in this video. So what is ThorChain? Well, they're called the Decentralized Liquidity Protocol, but if you want a really quick analogy, you could think about it like this. It's sort of like Uniswap, which is a decentralized cryptocurrency exchange where you can actually swap between different blockchains. So what do I mean by that? Well, if you go to an application like Uniswap, for example, and you say, you know, I have Ethereum cryptocurrency or Ether, and let's just pick a token here, let's randomly say... Uh, you know, the BAL token, then the cryptocurrency that you're swapping for, then this entire, you know, transaction takes place on top of the Ethereum blockchain. It's powered by smart contracts. So it's decentralized in this way. But one limitation here is that the cryptocurrency itself that you're swapping for actually has to be an Ethereum-based token, an ERC-20 token that lives on top of the Ethereum blockchain. But what ThorChain does is it lets you actually trade, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies natively between different blockchains. So if you wanted to trade, you know, Bitcoin, for example, with Ether, then you couldn't necessarily do that on Uniswap without taking your Bitcoin and converting it to something like wrapped Bitcoin, converting it over to an ERC-20 token, and then swapping it on top of a DEX like Ethereum. So it really opens up the range of possibilities for different blockchains. So different layer one, you know, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and Ethereum can be swapped natively for one another. You could, of course, see this, you know, happen with other layer one cryptocurrencies that you could possibly think of, swapping with ThorChain, and lots of other possibilities from there. And so why do I think this is such an important project? Well, we'll talk more about that here in a minute when I I, you know, just explain exactly how the application works, but let's just talk about the user demand and the use cases here. So like I talked about a minute ago, being able to actually, you know, swap native assets between blockchains like Bitcoin and Ether, for example, to really popular layer one cryptocurrencies, that's huge. But let's talk about why people want to do that in the first place. So we're seeing a huge trend towards decentralized exchanges or DEXs. So this is opposed to centralized exchanges or <laughs> however you want to say that word, like Binance or Coinbase, for example. So what are some reasons why? Well, you know, any of these centralized exchanges have control over your funds whenever you're not using them. So let's say you go deposit, you know, money onto a cryptocurrency exchange. Well, essentially your balance is just being tracked on a server at that point. You know, whenever you go trade coins, they're just like updating their database. And then whenever you withdraw, that's when you actually get your cryptocurrency back. But <laughs> there lies the problem. What if they decide to put withdrawal limits on you? Uh, you have to also go through the hoops of KYC registration, and that sort of doxes your identity whenever you move to the blockchain, all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's lots of different reasons why people are preferring decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges or non-custodial solutions to custodial solutions. And that's part of the whole uh, you know, move towards decentralized finance or DeFi, where you have more cust custody over your own funds, there's less red tape, and you can move more freely throughout this financial ecosystem. And that's part of what ThorChain is allowing you to do. So let's say you wanted to you know, move between blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum, for example, then it's creating new ways to do it. So let's look exactly how. So I actually want to refer to uh, an article here that was written by uh, Eric Voorhees over at uh, Shapeshift. He does a really good job of explaining this. So I want to call out some pretty good points. So how does it work? Well, it, looks, it works a lot like uh, Uniswap does where it has liquidity providers on the back end. So, you know, Uniswap has uh, automated market maker technology where, you know, you don't see a fancy like order book and candlestick chart whenever you go look at Uniswap. Basically, you just click buy uh, and you tell it the token that you have and the token that you want to get back. 
And then in the background, there's actually a liquidity provider for each trading pair that um, you know has supplied um, money for this. So if you want to trade ETH for DAI, then basically you have a giant pool of people who have supplied ETH to DAI uh, into this, all right, who are helping power the liquidity for this application. And they, you know, get a cut of the trading fees, all that kind of stuff. Okay. So uh, ThorChain works with a very similar model. So we don't have smart contracts in a blockchain like we would in the Ethereum context. But, you know, when you're talking about layer one chains, then essentially you have, you know, nodes uh, that power this ecosystem. So from that perspective, if you want to you know, be a liquidity provider on the Bitcoin blockchain, there's a, there's a node operator involved. OK, so these people run Thor nodes, which comprise... Uh, the Thorchain network, so Tendermint, Cosmos, software developer kit here, uh, and a node for each supported chain. So you have two nodes. You have a Thorchain node, and then you basically have a Bitcoin node if you're on the Bitcoin side of things, and you run the protocol that way. So we've seen this type of uh, design pattern with other protocols like Chainlink, for example. You know, have done the Chainlink masterclass inside of our programs. You know, seen opportunity for developers to run their own, you know, even side businesses this way, or even full-time businesses, depending on how much money you can make. And so this is a similar type of situation. And one of the big benefits here is instead of uh, the keys being held by a central custodian, like I was talking about a second ago they were held in a multi-sig arrangement uh from the thor chain nodes okay and so these are the node operators that help uh run these decentralized liquidity protocols a lot like uniswap but different it requires more infrastructure involved than just deploying a new smart contract to a network and so now let's actually look at the rune asset itself so this is the cryptocurrency uh for thor chain so it's under the ticker rune but the uh you know, cryptocurrency is just called ThorChain. <laughs> the price that we've seen run up like crazy over the past several months so wh what is it why is it important in the ecosystem? How does it work? Um, you, as you'll see, some of these things have likely contributed to the run-up in price here. So Rune is a part of the ThorChain design, okay? So here's several different ways in which that's true. So it's the asset in which fees are charged to traders uh, and paid to validators and liquidity providers. So the whole idea here is, this is very similar to the Chainlink token, where if you want to uh, use the Chainlink Oracle network, um, and you run a run of validator, then you earn a passive income reward for doing that, just like I was talking about here. And the fees that you get are paid out in this token. So this token is a lot of other things. Uh, it's used for Thorchain governance. So one rune equals one vote. And also this is the asset that uh, the validating Thor nodes must provide for bond for the privilege you know, and responsibility of validating transaction. Again, that's a lot like the Chainlink protocol, which I was talking about a minute ago. And the last thing is, uh, this is key. This is the asset that must be paired uh, when every you know pair is deposited. So if you look at the Uniswap design that I was talking about here, someone wants to trade ETH for DAI. You know, uh, ETH is the trading pair, uh, and you know, sorry, ETH and DAI are the trading pair. But anytime you create a liquidity pool, you know, you need ETH to do this. So other trades are routed with ETH being the common pair. So if you wanted to trade, you know, DAI for, you know, uh, some other cryptocurrency like, you know, USDC, it's kind of silly, but let's just say you want to try DAI for USDC. Now, on the back end with Uniswap, uh, basically, you know, your order would then hit two different liquidity pools with ETH being the common pair that it's routed through. So similarly with the ThorChain design, uh, it looks like Rune is the uh, common token that's needed for each pair. So if you want to create a pool, you know, you need Rune and that's part of this value accrual. So there's reason for people to have this token. It's likely going to be parked inside these pools, earning people passive income rewards, but it'll be just sitting there. And that's the big reason that it'll be useful. People can hold the asset and do stuff with it. It's actually productive. And so for that reason, there's a big and strong incentive for these liquidity providers in particular to hold, not sell, which would have an effect on the supply and demand economics of the asset itself, which could, you know, not financial advice, lead to some of the price appreciation that we've seen and beyond. And so some people have objections about that and say that it provides like, you know, a lot of friction to the user experience, providing liquidity to the protocol or participating in trades. And he has a pretty good response to this here. Uh, I'll just put a link down in the article in the description below. You can go check that out if you want to. But the last major point here that he makes, and I think it's really cool to call out, is a native yield on the Bitcoin network for the first time ever. So what does he mean by that? And why is it such a big deal? So let's say, you know, you know, DeFi has gotten really popular over the past year for lots of reasons. One reason is that you can earn yield on you know assets that you're just holding so if you wanted to take some coins and put them in a DeFi app you can earn a passive income reward usually really high apys like you know over 10 percent per year which some people say that's not much but you know in crypto terms but it's it's huge compared to you know traditional finance where you got like zero percent basically in your in your checking account or your savings account. And so, you know, people are using DeFi apps to get crazy returns. But a problem is if you have an asset like Bitcoin, then 
you typically have to do, as I talked about earlier, you have to wrap it and make an ERC-20 token version of it and use it on the Ethereum network, or you have to use some other bridge. And sometimes these have like failure points and like people don't really trust taking their Bitcoin and converting it over to a different blockchain. And the benefit that he's talking about here right now is you can just take Bitcoin and actually keep it on the Bitcoin blockchain itself, or at least your ownership over that Bitcoin, and still participate in earning yields on top of it without leaving that particular ecosystem. And how that's a really big positive for this protocol call as well. So it makes other you know, crypto assets productive without leaving their current ecosystem. All right. So those are some of the top reasons why this is such an important project to learn about. I think it's going to have a huge role in the future as people want to get into DeFi who may have had other crypto holdings who are already in the ecosystem and don't want to be a part of the centralized finance ecosystem, but want to do everything in DeFi. And this creates a way for them to move between different blockchains without having to hit a centralized exchange first, whether that's the first time entering into the space or once they're in the space, actually hitting that centralized exchange to swap between blockchains. And I think it's also really huge to be able to put, you know, assets that don't have, you know, smart contracts on their ecosystem, like actually make those productive assets without leaving those ecosystems, just like the Bitcoin example that I showed you a minute ago. So that's all I got for today. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people can learn about blockchain. You know, if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you go to my YouTube homepage, you can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. If you like those and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, you don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.